Hello everybody, Sam from Road Trail Run. Let's take a look at the Adidas Adi Zero Prime X. This is definitely the most extreme super shoe yet created. In fact, its stack height of 50 millimeters at the heel, 40 at the forefoot is so high that it is not allowed for international type competition because 40 at the heel is the limit. And a fellow won a marathon in Austrian under 210 and was disqualified for wearing this shoe. So is it a gimmick? Is it for real? How does it run? Well, we're going to get into all that today. But just to give you an idea of how massive it is, let's compare to the Adi, the Adi Zero Adios Pro, which uh, looks like a miniature shoe in comparison. And although overall the construction is really quite similar, we have our energy rods. We have a, a very similar outsole. We have a very similar cellar mesh upper, although there are some differences. With this 50 millimeter heel, which is 10 millimeters more than the Adios Pro, Adidas has put a uh, what they call a sling launch, which is basically a strap of plasticky material around the heel. I found the heel hold super good. I'm gonna tell you, show you from the run uh, how they perform with my first impressions from a few days ago. So let's talk about the weight here and compare it to the Adios Pro 2. Um, so you come in here at uh, about 9.25 ounces or um, 262 grams, which is only in a size nine, which is only 29 grams or one ounce more than the Adios Pro for that 10 millimeters more Light Strike Pro uh, plus uh, the additional rods. So this is a remarkably light uh, shoe for the amount of stack height. So it comes in about the same weight as the um, Tempo uh, Next from Nike uh, and uh, about uh, 1.4 ounces heavier than the RC Elite two from New Balance, the racer, which is kind of a comparable shoe. I'll get into more details on those comparisons after the run. The upper is, of course, the cellar mesh. Inside, you see, we have uh, overlays, I mean, underlays. You can see the blue. And then on the exterior, we have overlays, the white. And these, these the Adidas three stripes are a little thicker than on the Adios Pro. Just a little thicker, but same idea. Um, we have a roomy toe box. The fit is definitely true to size, not much of a toe bumper. Foot is super well held. You can see sort of an armature here that holds your foot where the laces come through. The tongue is very unusual. It's super thin. I think it's a bit too thin. And the lace is also a bit fussy to lace up, but once you're in, you're good. But there's a bit of bite. Uh, Derek in our written review noticed as much. But the actual tongue is not a full fabric up here. It, it's, it's actually kind of a, a pointed thing with slots on either side. That doesn't seem to be an issue. I think it actually helps the foot move with the shoe. Over in our Dios Pro, we have a thicker full tongue with even a bit of padding. You have none of that here. So what's the idea here? Well, the idea is was to create, I think, a trainer complement with similar characteristics to the Adios Pro and the somewhat even smaller stack Takumi Sen, which is only 33 millimeters, which we expect to come soon. So you have a triumvirate from the super cushioned uh, long distance trainer down to the Takumi Sen, kind of your 10K shoe. Um, we have Light Strike Pro, and a f um, it's all Light Strike Pro here. To my sense, on the run, it's a bit softer than the Adios Pro, but maybe it's just all that stack height. Uh, the other differences are uh, that you have the five energy rods, but here in the in our um, Prime, you can see they're more they're not quite as exposed the slot, so you have a bit more stability through through here and then we have three more energy uh kind of uh rods but i think they're flatter that sit below and we have a full 
continental rubber outsole. Great coverage, great thickness, so this should be very, very durable. In terms of the geometry, I measured the width at the heel, the forefoot exactly the same as the Pro, but you're sitting on 10 millimeters more uh, stack height. Uh, and it is a shoe, I'll say right up front, and we'll get into the, the ride, that is not a lifestyle shoe, that's for sure. And it is not a shoe, if you will, for jogging. This is a shoe for going long distances in at a decent uh, pace. I found at 930 per mile or faster, they really came into being. Even though you've got an additional carbon plate, as in the Pro right below here, you are on a giant and relatively narrow heel, so you need to keep yourself moving forward. But once you're doing that, you'll roll forward just beautifully. Uh, the additional softness, the additional uh, plate type rods that are below the other five lead to a very bouncy, soft and springy ride with plenty of forefoot stability. So I took them out for two runs, one about four and a half miles, Second one, six and a half, ended up at about 9.04. In both cases, I was surprised. I was faster than I expected. Um, and, I'll t and I'm gonna give you some impressions directly from the run. And what I've done in recent days is I'm filming parts of this review directly via the um, Ray-Ban Stories glasses. So these glasses incorporate two cameras uh, speakers and microphones in the temples and all you have to do is press the temple or command them and they'll start filming so it's a it's a really cool new way to kind of create your stories on the run so you're gonna see some of that during during the uh, the ride and fit sections which I'm gonna get to right now beautiful evening here about five o'clock still pretty warm let's talk about the fit of the prime X True to size fit, it will favor, I think, wider, higher volume feet versus super narrow because my uh, right narrow foot is not quite as secure as my left. Some interesting things to note, look at that skeletal tongue. Seems to work well, I think it'll probably allow the foot to flex a bit, even though we've got the rigid profile here. Look at that stack, the, um, the, the green strap, uh, I think is working as intended because look how high off the ground we are. Um, the heel hold is excellent, although you are very high off the ground. Just as Derek said in our written review, uh, this is not a shoe to jog in. It feels much better when you get forward. So I'm going to get some more riding in and we'll talk to you later. But a uh, very, very beautifully executed 50 millimeters of, of heel here of light strike. So second run, going by Rye Harbor here. Wow, just so smooth, soft in the front. Of course the heel, which is so much energy return. That's just so smooth. Heading down to 835. Some storms on the coast, beautiful homes here. So some post run fit and ride commentary. Yes, I do think it could use more uh, padding and a kind of bit more substantial tongue, maybe a little bit different lacing, got a bit of bite. Um, the fit, generally I'd say uh, true to size. I have a true to size pair. I think it'll favor slightly wider feet as opposed to narrow ones, but I think most foot shapes should be well accommodated. The cellar mesh is soft enough. It's not a stretch mesh and there isn't much of a heel uh, counter, but our sling, sling strap and padding, not much, but just very comfortable upper overall. In terms of uh, the ride, it is definitely unique. It's really an experience, very dynamic. You do have to kind of keep yourself under control, keep yourself forward given that narrow narrow landing and super high height. But if you think uh, lean forward a little bit and get onto the combination of the rods, the five rods, the three plates, and that 40 millimeters of stack height of the uh, Light Strike Pro in, Pro in the mix, you really feel propulsive. Now we can make some comparisons here. 
uh, at almost exactly the same weight. We have the Nike, let me grab them here. We have the Nike Tempo Next, 45 millimeter heel, about the same drop. Nike goes with the carbon type plate and their AirPod. So this is a more kind of aggressively rebounding shoe, kind of a dense rebound, not as kind of soft and bouncy as our Adidas, but they're clearly going up against each other. Uh, its upper is a little kind of snugger, a little more performance fit. I kind of prefer the Adidas, but there's nothing wrong with this upper. It actually has a real heel counter. Um, it has um, React foam, which is firmer and denser at the heel, and then Zoom X, so it, and it's a bit, I would say, uh, more stable at the heel because of the heel counter and the, the React. Uh, so it's a very deliberate mechanical ride. So Adidas, I think, really went for um, a comparative experience that was very, very different here with additional four, five millimeters of stack, a bouncier kind of more free flowing ride and yet more cushion, of course. Um, I think the um, Tempo Next is maybe a more dependable kind of tempo shoe um, uh, a little steadier on its feet, uh, but maybe, but very kind of mechanical in its feel, very divorced from the road, whereas this is a much more natural feeling, if a bit harder to control. Now, another one we should compare to, um, more in the racing class, if you will, but considerably lighter at 7.8 ounces versus 9.25, the uh, RC Elite uh, from New Balance. Now the RC Elite has a, I think, similar fitting upper, a little more substantial, denser material, a little firmer toe bumper, um, softer foam to the pressing, um, kind of a bouncier foam, um, uh, about a little bit more stable at the heel, uh, but more kind of a, a racing, pure racing ride, I think, not quite as cushioned in the forefoot, um, but it's clearly a strong competitor to our um, to our uh, Prime X uh, and worthy of consideration. So that's the uh, New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite 2. So we have a uh, full review from Derek Lee of the Prime X over on uh, Road Trail Run in written form. Uh, it's a great new option from Adidas, a, a very extreme, I wouldn't call it a lifestyle shoe or a jogging shoe. It is definitely a high performance running shoe that really pushes the bounds of uh, cushioning and carbon type rods really to the max. Uh, it's a very, it has a very breathable upper. It's comfortable. It's, I found faster than I expected um, uh, given the effort. Uh, it's a bit hard to tame. Uh, so it's not uh, it's not the kind of shoe you kind of kind of uh, go into and go any pace. You'll have to kind of focus a bit on getting forward onto all that springy front. But it's a really fine new option. It's a great long distance trainer uh, from Adidas with just practically infinite amounts of cushion. I can't think of a shoe with as much forgiving cushion as this one that actually um, moves you along, given how much there is and the integration of our rods and uh, uh, kind of plates in the front. So it's really an amazing uh, beast. Uh, it is $250, which is worth, you know, you gotta consider it's an expensive shoe. I think it should prove quite durable because we have tons of rubber here, uh, continental rubber, well dispersed on the front and the rear. So you, you know, you've got a good wide platform for stability and wear up front. So that's the Adi Zero Prime X. It's available from Adidas now. We'll also have it in a comparison review of other carbon uh, plated uh, trainers. We have the written version up on roadtrailrun.com uh, right now, uh, where I compare it to the Tempo Next, the, the Scott Speed Carbon, the um, Kraft CTM uh, Race Rebel, the New Balance, Lorado and the Hoka Bondi X, all sort, all carbon plated max cushion trainer slash racers. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the video 
and if you so choose, we hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel. Have a great run.